Hello, today we are going to be looking at the coordinate system in DCS. First, let's look at how DCS interprets coordinates. DCS uses vectors and we have VEC2 and VEC3 that we can use. VEC2 is a 2D vector and uses the ground plane as a reference and VEC3 is a 3D vector that can reference points in the sky or altitude if you will. I suggest reading up more on this on the DCS website and I'll leave a link in the description. These vectors are good for us within the scripting environment, but if you want to output coordinates to a player, you will need to convert them. We can do this as well with a singleton. In the singleton section on the DCS website, we can see that we can convert coordinates in the chords section. However, before we can do any of this, we need to know how to get the coordinates within DCS. To do this, we'll take a look at the get point function within the object section of the DCS website. You can see here there are many other things we can get as well, but for now we are only focused on getting coordinates. Now let's look at an example of this with a simple mission, and then later we'll apply this to our convoy mission we've been working on in this series. First we need to get the group within our script file. We'll do this with the get by name singleton and then store it in the convoy1 variable. I'm also just going to get the name of the group and output it in a message. This is not required, but sometimes it helps to visually see how the script is running. Being our group has more than one unit, let's get the units within the group with the get units command so that we can get specific coordinates of one of the unit. Now that we have the group and all the units in it, we can get the point of one of the units with get point. This will return the coordinates in VEC3 format. For this example, let's just grab the coordinates of the first unit. Once we have the point, we can extract the X, Y, and Z specific coordinates. Always remember that X is north-south, Z is east-west, and Y is up-down or altitude. Let's output these as well so that we can see them when the mission runs, along with the other data, so that we can compare them to the map coordinates. Again, this is not required, but it will help visualize the script. So here I already have a very simple mission set up for testing. Let's add our script file in the triggers and load it to see this in action. If we change the information bar coordinates with left, alt, and y, we can see that the numbers in our message match the coordinates in the bar. We now have the exact position of the first unit of our group. From here we can do a lot of things, but for now we are just going to convert these to an MGRS format and output them in a message. First we'll need to change it from VEC3 to LAT long, and then convert LAT long to MGRS. We'll do this with the LO to LL command, followed by an LL to MGRS command. You can do all of this in one line, but laying it out like this makes it easier to see what is going on. Again, I'm going to send a message just so that we can see what is being done. Now that we have our MGRS coordinates, we need to know how to extract the data. The MGRS information can be pulled out with UTM zone, digraph, easting, and northing, as you can see here. I have purposely placed the group in the mission editor to where the MGRS coordinates have preceding zeros. The Lua string will not recognize this, so we need to do some coding to add these zeros if needed. We do this by checking the length of the string, and if it is less than 5, we add zeros to the front of it until the length of the string is 5. Finally, let's put the entire MGRS coordinate together as a string so we can output it in a format that makes sense. Now we can run the mission and look at all the data we have. As you can see, the raw MGRS coordinate does not have the zero originally, but once the script runs, it recognizes that it is in the improper format and the zeros are then added as you can see in our final output. We can use the other functions within DCS to get other coordinate formats as well, so be sure to use what is appropriate for your mission. We now know how all of this works, let's put it together in a better script file that is more compact and create some functions that we can call when needed to get a coordinate. As you can see, we didn't bring all of the messages over and we have condensed it much more and put all of it inside of one function. I also stored some of the data in variables, this just makes it easier to handle. 
Now when this function is called, the MDRS string will be output with the return function. For now, we'll just do a message to call the function, but when we tie it into the convoy mission, this will be done a bit differently, as you will see soon. Let's give this another test, just to make sure we didn't break anything before we implement it in our convoy mission. Now with all of the other messages removed, we only get the MGRS coordinates displayed. And as you can see, it is in the proper format and matches the information bar coordinates. You might also note that I'm only displaying four numbers instead of the full five. If we take a closer look at the script file, you can see where I did this with the string.sub. This can be very helpful for shortening coordinates for ease of inputting into certain aircraft. Now that we have all this done, we can tie it into our existing convoy strike mission. First we'll put the function in and then we can simply add lines in our activation script that will update the message so when it is generated it will include the MGRS coordinates. Once your script file is updated, be sure to update the trigger if needed and then load the mission. As you can see, based on the group of spawns, the coordinates change in our message. Before we wrap this video up, let's also look at another way that we can use these coordinates. Let's say we want to smoke a group, but we don't want the smoke to appear directly on a unit. We can get the VEC3 of one of the units and change the X and Z values a bit and then deploy the smoke. Let's head back over to the script file for our simple mission that we started this video with and we'll create a short function to do this. Once again, we'll get the VEC3 of the first unit of the group and then we'll get a random number to change the X and Z points. Once that's done, we can then trigger the smoke command and the smoke will appear in the area of the group. Let's run the mission and see it in action. In the next video, we'll talk about how we can tie these to an event so that we can use them when events happen throughout the mission. If you've made it this far, hit the like button and please consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it, it's free, and it would really help me out. Thanks for watching.